Good morning and welcome back everyone to another great episode of Coaching Conversations with Nick and Chris from UpCoach. Nick, how are you going this morning? Well, very good. Uh, good, uh, good weekend. We've uh, spoken a lot about lots of really cool stuff. Funny enough, yeah, but, we uh, I think, you know, we're edging one step closer to Christmas, pool, mm. good food and uh, swimming. Yes, the downhill slide. I know that you wrote an email this morning about, you know, the, the, the end of the road kind of thing. Everything's leading down to the end of 2020, which is uh, good for some, great for others, perhaps, what has happened this year. But a subject that we were speaking about before we kicked off the episode was, and we're feeling it ourselves to a certain degree, you're kind of fatigued to a certain degree about, you know, you've worked through the year. It's been, there's been highs and lows from an emotional perspective as well. And, uh, and we thought that would be a really good topic today. So I'll intro the topic, which is decision fatigue and more importantly, how to dis- deal with decision fatigue in your business. So Nick, can you throw some advice, shine some light, you know, throw your expertise towards us on how, number one, I guess, what is decision fatigue for those of you that don't know? And number two, how to deal with decision fatigue when it comes to running your business? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, look, I think this happens, you know, for us here in Australia around um, this time, you know, in the US, it's probably happening more just before August because they're, you know, vacation, some vacation. Mm-hmm. Is there. Um, and to be honest, it doesn't need a particular time. It just happens at different points of your your, your year, I, I believe, and or your career. So to start off with, I mean, my interpretation of decision fatigue is just finding it hard just to make, you know, decisions that you could pretty much, you know, usually come up with a, a solution and go for it. And and here's what I mean. One big decision fatigue, you know, decision is, you know, where am I heading with the business? What do I want out of the business? You know, what's the vision for, let's say, in this case, 2021? You know, what is it? What are the goals? You know, a lot of people, if you talk to them now about what the goals are for next year, it's almost like they're feeling tired around that. They're not quite sure. They're feeling a little bit sort of, you know, brain foggy and they're concentrating mm. on, you know, getting deliveries out and doing whatever they need to do today before Christmas. So decision fatigue, um, I suppose, comes in different packages. You know, I think you've got decision fatigue based around planning. You've got decision fatigue um, based around sales, based around marketing, based around just your personal life. And to kind of, you know, sum it in different areas, it's the inability for you to make, you know, favourable decisions on your future and or on your present, right? Things that you need to do today and or in your future, right? That's a decision Mm -hmm. that needs to be made. Um, And let me kind of, you know, create the context around it. You know, I was thinking about it. Um, A client said, you know, just I find it hard to, a prospect that's coming on with us now as a client said, Nick, I find it hard to actually just make decisions. I feel like I'm exhausted or actually I feel like I'm a bit lost. And and this guy's got a pretty successful business. You know, he inherited the business from his parents, bought his parents out, um, you know, in the millions. And he's just like, it would be really good just to have somebody beside me to be able to make a decision. Um, and we see this all the time, you know, with, with the work that we do with our clients. You know, sometimes decisions aren't easy just to come up with a decision yourself. Sometimes uh, just having that helping hand or a shoulder to lean on or that, you know, another pair of eyes to be look, looking at it is really, really critical. So, you know, when you've got the inability to make this decisions, that then leads to what? You know, procrastination. And all procrastination is the inability to make a bloody decision for mm-hmm. a long time, you yeah. know, where yeah. you, you should be able to make that decision. Um, it's interesting. I had another prospect, you know, that was, yeah, cool, ready to go. I'm cool into it. You know, spoke about price, spoke about all that stuff. And then next thing goes, well, I've got have to look after all this other stuff. And now I don't make decisions lightly and they do call me a procrastinator. And I'm like, dude, we've been talking for the last three weeks. What's another six months going to do differently than making the decision right now? And he goes, I don't do decisions quickly and I have to mull over it. I'm like, sounds like you're a big bloody procrastinator. He goes, yeah, and it's wow. interesting because I feel like saying, well, maybe that's what kind of got you in the first place, you know, where you are in the first place from not being able to make a decision. Yeah, that's true. Right, and that's just another level of decision fatigue, to be really honest, you know. Then I think it goes worse than fatigue. It's the inability to make a decision, you know. So mm. that's kind of to sum that up, you know, in, in around that. Okay, so do you think, quick question around that, that there's different, so there are different levels of decision fatigue because you mentioned procrastination, 
but it could be even short term or long term, perhaps decision fatigue. I'm not really sure because it's a relatively yeah, new topic, but it's like uh, maybe there are different levels from. I would be thinking so. You know, think about it like this: um, if you're, I don't know, let, let's let's talk a, a decision around money. If you're somebody that traditionally has lost money in whatever it is, not managed it right, went to do a deal, didn't work out, went to spend money on marketing, didn't work out, got a new employee, didn't work out, whatever it may be. Now, I think add, add, couple that with being a little bit tired around making decisions because you've had to make them all on your own and you're just a little bit weary about it. You know, to me, now, here we go. That's a negative decision level or it's a decision fatigue based on a negative experience. You know, most people in, in, in life make decisions based on what their experience was for, for them before they need to make the next mm. decision. Mm. If you've had, but you were just talking about doctors and stuff before, if you've had a bad experience with a doctor, your next decision based around going to see a doctor, more than likely if it's been bad, you're kind of a bit weary. Oh, geez, that's going to hurt. It's not going to be any good. And here's a perfect example. One of my friends I was talking to yesterday, she went and got insert put into her gun. So it's where they drill the gun, put a metal uh, oh, yes. rod in there, and then yeah. they put a tooth in there, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and she goes, I work myself up so much that she had to take anxiety pills. Like, <laughs> freaking out yesterday. Goes, give me double the dose. She's smoking cigarette after cigarette. And then she comes part through it. She goes, oh, it's sore, but it wasn't that sore, you know. And she goes, I worked myself up. So do you see, once again, that's an interesting level of decision around that. And to be honest, if I spoke about any other thing other than what was on her mind at that time, uh, more than likely if she's got some decision fatigue around that, she wouldn't be able to make a favourable outcome. So, yeah, you're right where it comes to the levels of different decisions and the fatigue around it. In, 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 you know, the, the overview of, of decision fatigue, I believe, is uh, just being either tired, weary, worried about, not sure of um, to make a decision, which then, you know, everything else is just too hard. You know, you put it in the two hard bars. Mm, and then it becomes procrastination. because Then it becomes working. procrastination. It's something that right. you should have taken care of and you have it, you know. Mm, yeah. One of my other mates is the same thing. I go, hey, dude, on set, I've got to do whatever you guys do. It's Monday today. I'm not even thinking that way. I'm like, dude, we've got to organize stuff for Saturday because it needs to be organized for Saturday because 10 other people that are involved in it. Oh, dude, I don't know. I'm not even thinking that way. Once again, you know, because he's just thinking about – 1400 other things that you know in his mind become priority in my mind no the saturday's priority because it's there's a lot of other things that are around it so this mm -hmm. happens a lot mm -hmm. you know you need to um do that marketing campaign but you get so caught up in all the other stuff that what you know you're putting it off and if you're fatigued around you know that because you're so snowed under you're not even you're not even thinking at that level. And that's where I think decision fatigue is really, really prominent. It, you know, where if you weren't fatigued on that, if you had somebody to be able to help you, if you uh, looked at it differently, if you were rested enough to take time to make very important decisions in your business, things would be different. To me, I think like, you know, Chris, everything that you've got in your reality today is the sum total of the decisions and or the non-decisions um, that you've made in your life. You know, yes, do, yes. Do, do you know what I mean? Like, Yes, can be very, very sobering thought too. You know, you are where you are because of the decisions that you've made. And you when are people... what you are and who you are. And in some cases, there's been decisions made on your behalf. I mean, let's say, I don't know, a guy comes to a red light and hits your car and you know, now you're in a wheelchair for the rest of your life. That's a decision that somebody mm -hmm. else made. Was it your decision to drive the car? I mean, you, you could do that. But I think then it's whatever that you've been left with is what decisions can you make around that? Can you give up on life? Or can you go, hey, you know what? Like, this is a new chapter. I can do new things as new opportunities. And, and this is a thing that we're seeing through COVID. A lot of people are getting decision fatigue now because they've had to make a lot of decisions based um, on their life around their livelihood, around their business, around their personal relationships, home relationships, whatever it may be. Mm. Um, and because they've had to make so many of them one hit, you know, everyone keeps going, oh, yeah, let's write off 2020. 2020 is the worst. COVID's the worst. But to be honest, for us, especially our company, it's been amazing. For, for me personally, it's been amazing. 
and it sounds a bit weird or it sounds a bit, you know, wankish, but it's it's along the lines of saying that, you know, if if they if the world sends you lemons, you know, fuck, make lemonade. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know I mean? like but it comes back to the decisions that we made at the beginning of the year also. So pre, pre-COVID, completely. pre-COVID, we made different decisions and we've made, you know, multiple decisions throughout the year as well. There's definitely been shitty times for us, don't get us wrong. Oh, man, yeah, you know, completely. We've worked through it just as much, but in terms of the output and what we've achieved, I think, you know, that 2020 has been a good year for UpCoach. Yeah, it's interesting. And it comes back to decisions, so. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, you know, we were talking about that a while ago. Where, you know, we used the word pivot. And, you know, we pivoted well before that with our marketing and everything else with that. So, you know, for the, anybody watching this, you know, we changed our marketing around. So regardless of whether things were open, closed, you know, COVID, no COVID, it didn't affect us because we used, you know, the telephone and we used and we used mm. online media mm. to be able yeah. to do what we do. And more people yeah. looked at online and, you know, answered the phone than anything else because they weren't, um, interesting enough, they weren't, you know, bombarded with making a hell of a lot of decisions. You know, they stayed at home, mm. figured it out, ate, you know, take away or cooked at home or, you know, you had a lot of time on your hands to watch TV or do what, you know, any of these things that come from that. So um, it's interesting, you know, it's it's interesting how there's many faces of decision fatigue depending on um, where it's at. But I think um, a big one is, you know, how are you trained for those decisions? You know, and I think we spoke about this in another episode where we spoke a lot about like, you know, model specific training. And to make decisions, it's it's you need to train yourself to make decisions, right? Right. You know, okay. that, you know, think about you, you can take this experience. When your kids were born to where they are today, the decisions around everything that they do today is easier than when they were born. Have you noticed that? I guess so. If, yes. they, if they if they go, hey dad, I want to play with Lego or yep. cars or any of those things. Mm-hmm. You've got two young boys, right? Mm-hmm. When they were two, you're like, nah, nah, because they're gonna put it in their mouth or That's stupid, right. stupid shit like that, you know, yeah. stick it in their eye or you know. Where yeah. now you go, yeah, whatever, you want to play they use the Lego they because you know they're not gonna eat it. Well then that's gonna, right. Yeah. You know, I agree. Do you know what I mean? So those decisions yes. are easier because you've actually trained yourself on those decisions. Now, God forbid, you know, something happened and they needed to go to hospital and you need to make a decision of, hey, they're either going to lose their right arm or they're going to die. Mm. That's a big fucking decision that mm. you need to work on, you know, mm-hmm. and it's, mm-hmm. you haven't been trained unless you're, you know, the surgeon. Or the, you, you, Do you see what I mean? Like, right, so I get it. Th- there's, there's specific training that makes decisions easier. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's like people that work. Yeah, like people that work in the armed forces. Obviously, like if you threw a general person in and gave them a gun in the middle of a gun oh, fight, yeah. they would freak out, panic, lie flat on the ground. I don't know, but yeah. the soldiers they're trained in a different way so that that's they can they react and, and make yeah, different decisions. Yeah, they come decisions. alive. That's it. That's, that's when they're the most effective. So yeah, so you know, based on that, for a business, it's the same thing. With your decision fatigue, is it specific to certain parts of your business? Is your decision fatigue specific to certain decisions based around the business? You know, always where it comes to money, you're always decision fatigue. I don't know, I shouldn't, it's too hard to make this decision, I'm worried, versus, hey, you know, you ask your secretary, can you go get me a sandwich? <laughs> well, what do you want on it? You go, whatever. What's the decision? Uh, give me whatever. You know, right. it's not... Detrimental to depending on the decision. So we've kind of covered, you know, what decision fatigue is and people that are listening to this right now might be really resonating with, yes, I'm at that position right now in my business. I understand uh, what you're talking about, Nick, and it has happened for me around sales, around money, around making those larger scale decisions. So what are the proactive steps to move through or to, to get through, you know, to get over decision fatigue? How do you push through that, particularly in regards to your business? Yeah, great, great question. The first thing is I feel that it's important to have an end objective really clear. Now, let's just call that the lighthouse. If you're clear about where that lighthouse is, if you're clear about where the vision is, where you want to take the business, all of these things, if you've got decision fatigue around getting that clarity, you need a little bit of time off. You need to not think about it, rest yourself, and then get pre-prepared. So, you know, that major decision for something like that may need to be done 
at a different time to where you're feeling a lot clearer in your mind. And usually mm-hmm. after a week off, you're going to feel better. Right. Okay. But if not, and you need to make those decisions, start with the lighthouse. So where is it, you know, what's the end objective? Yeah, and I'll tell you why. Because any of the decisions that you make in the present towards your future, if you've got a future that you can ping off, it allows you to understand what the coordinates are and how to get around it. So it's like when they're going to land on the moon. They don't just go, oh, we're just going on there. They're triangulated positions, you know what I mean? They know right. the distance to the earth, to the moon, to the craft, and it can literally create a triangle so they can track the craft at all time and make it land in the right place. Right, mm-hmm. next three, four years, we're going to learn plenty of stuff there. So mm-hmm. right, they're working on all that trajectory cal- calculations. And yep. why am I saying that is because I know they need to get to the moon but they need to make decisions today based on what that objective outcome is. Remember, we call it the lighthouse. But right. So number one is know the objective and know where you're wanting to head to. Number one. Yeah. Number two is I think you should prioritize these in um, levels of decision that need to be made. Mm-hmm. You know, am I worried about what uniforms we're going to wear in 12 months? The answer is probably, you know, it's down on the list. It might be a five. Am I worried about what personnel I need to take? The answer is probably yes, and that's probably a two or a three. <clears throat> right. Am I okay. worried about how much money that I need to make to make a decision today to get that set up to achieve that future goal starting today? The answer is yes. That's a that's a priority one decision. Right. You so know, step two. Step two is prioritize what decisions matter most, and we kind of teach this when from a coaching perspective anyway but prioritize what decisions matter most now. Yeah, I think that's really important. Um, And then the last one is I think you just need to ask this question. Is the decision that I'm about to make today going to get me further towards the objective that I want to get to or further away from? You know, and and, and here's a perfect decision. You know, some people, like we know this with coaching, some people are like, oh, you know, I'll have to think about it, I procrastinate and all of this Mm. stuff. And I'm like, your inability to make the decisions already cost you dearly. You don't, you Mm. can't recognize that because the inability for you to work with us because you've made a decision based on the wrong objective, oh, it's the money, it's all about the money, the money, money versus here's the outcome that you can get everything else with it and your Mm. belief is critical. So I think number one, you've got to, like I said, you've got to go, is this going to lead me towards it? And the second question is, um, do I actually believe it? Because Mm. a a decision is based on a belief most of the times, unless it's reactionary. You know, somebody comes out at you with a knife, that's a reactionary decision. In Krav Maga that I train, um, it's to react really, really quickly. And the way that it's done is, remember I said just through training, we train it over and over and over and over. And I like, I know, you know, just this movement here, I don't know if you can see it, but mm. this movement here is, you know, I'm not uh, somebody trying to stab you over the head with a knife, so I've blocked it. And this punch here simultaneously is a punch to the throat, punch to the ear, to the face, like simultaneously. So as they're coming in, bang, right? As soon as that, they've, you've, you've stunned them a bit, that's where you're attacking because... You know, somebody's coming at you with your knife. Uh, yeah, they're yeah. Not, they're not there to cuddle you. You know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. it, it sounds weird, but that decision is split second. It's reactionary because you've trained it so much. So, but right. it's a belief also to go, I believe I can disarm this guy. I believe I've got a fighting chance. Mm. Not, I oh, will see how it goes. Mm. Because, you know, the blade gets through and you're about to start leaking lots of blood. And if a blade gets through, it's going to kill you. It's an extremity, but it's still uh, a belief in your ability to get the objective done. If you want to think about it like that. So. Right. Okay. So that third step really sits around uh, realizing <clears throat> once you're making that step, you know, you've de- you decided at step two uh, what you need to get done or what, what decision matters most. And then deciding, you know, uh, of from a greater importance perspective, how quickly you need to act on that decision to get to your goal fastest, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay, cool. Right. Well, that kind of wraps decision fatigue. And uh, this is a really interesting question, or at least a, a topic that we're digging down into. Nick and I were speaking mm-hmm. a lot about this before the episode started. So uh, guys, if you're struggling from decision fatigue, please reach out. Don't suffer you know, in silence or suffer by yourself. Reach out to us at askitupcoach.com.au. If you're listening or, or watching this right now and you need some help 
around making those larger decisions in your business, or you just need some help around learning how to deal with decision fatigue, not only in your life, but in your business as well. Be happy to answer any questions and give you some support or even, you know, a free session um, to help you uh, along your way. Nick, thanks again for today. No problem. All good. And, uh, and we'll see you all again and speak to you all again very soon. Bye now.